My general disappointment with the growing and now continually declining gameplay of this Destiny 2 shitty adventure, it continues to piss me off to no end about the, the goal that Bungie has in wanting to continue something that is very rapidly dying. And I'm at a loss in trying to figure out what I honestly would like to do next in this venture that is somehow still here in Destiny. And so I feel that while I am here this evening, it would be nice, if not necessary, to formally review the lot of things that I'm trying to do or have done and that I have noticed thus far in my journeys here on Destiny 2 for what it is honestly worth anymore. I am not the type of gamer that's going to idly sit by and repetitively play an honestly crappy video game and say that this is better than the first game. I can play shitty video games, I've done it before, and clearly I'm doing it right now. But in order to continue my assessed journeys further until whenever it is the demise of this community or the video game may be absolute, it is necessary to reflect on past choices and decisions and ideas having been made or brought into realization in order to steady the path forward. I am not stupid, but merely working to try to spread the educational perspective in the correct direction. Of growing good gameplay. I originally comprised a good 35 to 45, if not one hour documentation originally, that I made regarding my thesis about the pros and cons in general of the Destiny 2 gameplay. However, this was met with a number of different walls as many friends and enemies and cunts and constructive assholes of this community weighed on upon their own objectives in positive and negative perspectives which further did educate me in their own perspectives of the gameplay. However, in the process of trying to incorporate the different perspectives on one and or both sides of the fence in this gameplay franchise, other YouTubers such as the Destiny Tracker or the Glip TV or Freakin' Rad or Mesa Sean or Gaming Sins, Leaderboard, all of which for them have already presently incorporated a highly thorough synopsis of the entirety of Destiny 2, including DLCs, game modes, the, the campaign with all the holes in it that can exceed that of Swiss cheese, the character developments, and the subtle inconsistencies that you can notice throughout playing the video game's general campaign that don't even correlate to the campaign but can actually just relate to the lore. All those things have been done and covered from top to bottom before all those said players or YouTubers likely stopped doing YouTubing on Destiny. And so, while I wish to have thought and done my own like I did for the very first Destiny video game like I did, at the same time, it's a waste of time to repeat what everybody else had already stated regarding the presence of this stupid video game. With few directions to actually constructively go into, I still sit here finding myself still here, still casually playing, as boring as it is, as repetitive as it is, and as unsatisfying as it continues to be, and yet somehow I'm still here. And I ask myself, why am I still here? Why am I still playing this piece of shit? when it doesn't mean anything anymore. Nothing about this gameplay is meaningful anymore other than what it is that you can try to do with friends 
and even then you're still highly limited to what you can do. And barring the obvious exclusion of private mode or the private mode paradigm in general, then that heavily limits it even more because there is zero replay value to anything in addition to the very scarce or wanted replayability of strikes or nightfall or the raids because there's no actual gaining of anything but coins it's the stupidest feature possible and out of all of this, the consolation prize that you could incorporate for a subtle new game mode is just Mayhem Mode. The shittiest gameplay possible from the first game that allows spammers to freely just BS everybody because they don't care or because they can't get good. Although I have to redirect that because the whole premise of quote unquote being good or skilled at the gameplay is now honestly a thing of the past. Because it takes no effort to really be good at this gameplay. You die, you die. Tell people that come from the first game could easily just as, just bowl over everything in this game because it's child's play. The main thing that's different is the fact that everything now is a bullet sponge. Every single target is a bullet sponge. And so it just requires more patience in order to actually kill something that eats away all of your ammunition for any of your clips. Plus, there's no synthesis, so you can't synthesize to get any of your stuff back. Otherwise, you could easily just blow through your specials or your heavy. However, the mechanics of the gameplay change that around. In order to deal with a number of different enemies, in order to keep grinding. And then, even then, the grinding is hollow. Because you don't get what you actually want. You have to rinse and repeat approximately a good eight to nine probably ten strikes before you get enough coins saved up in order to take them back to whoever the hell you exchange coins for in order to get a possible one out of however many options from that said vendor or designated vanguard hmm. going back to the beginning let me review as to the campaign Granted, like I said earlier, I originally had a more thorough synopsis for this entire documented piece, but with so many different conflicting factors that suddenly came into this, I decided to do this in the most didactic and simplistic presentation possible. And so I just attached a long audio file to one said picture piece as an attached file. This way I can wholeheartedly make an effort, and honestly just an effort, to establish my own perspective in my ventures through this franchise. In summarization on totality, the campaign was very hollow, as it had more, more holes in it than actual loose ends being tied up from the first game created more questions than answers, which I'm sure is what allows the DLCs and pending DLCs coming to fill in all these unnecessary gaps, rather than continuing the story. Point two is the game designs, as it's just a pretty face, honestly. Everything looks pretty, as everything is honestly reskinned. Nothing new is introduced in the video game other than specifics of changing the heavies and specials around. Everything else seems to be reskinned and redone with no new end no new elements pending. Highly lazy, but expected, because it is done in an effort to save money for stupid reasons. Point three The extra activities and options to do in the gameplay. Honestly, without a private mode or the necessitation to incorporate private mode. These are very hollow and limited wastes of time and effort and joy in order to honestly just tease the player at something different when it's the same mission done in different ways or seen in different ways with different quote-unquote rewards that all total out to the same accumulation of tokens. 
point four the downloadable content the first DLC the whole curse of Osiris thing was a good grab back into trying to rejuvenize the gameplay that had died from the continual repetitiveness and the lackluster of the raid at that point the Leviathan raid in order to restore gameplay to the to the whole grid which worked for what only about a day until the DLC itself also caved in by filling up one hole as to where the whole lighthouse of the trial the whole lighthouse of Osiris came from yes that's one nice thing out of all that but at the process of doing this again you reintroduced reskinned weapons and reskinned enemies rather than introducing a new enemy tier all together you have Vex, you have Taken, you have Cabal, you have Fallen and you have whatever the hell those Seath people were from the Rise of Iron if that even counted as an additional species and not just some type of revamped species with an additional limb or memberment missing here or there from the Vex or the Fallen but there was a huge opportunity there missed that was lazily done which was highly expected because the company doesn't give a damn about the opinion it gives a damn only about the consumers money why it is that the community doesn't get this shit I don't know and honestly don't care at this point why because it's the community's own fault that this game and the whole franchise is dead out of ignorance and prideful whining that people chose to stupidly listen to because people are stupid and you can't fix ignorance point five my returning association with the destiny community now needless to say I don't really have to delve too much into this but for those that care or don't care I will delve into anyway because this is my own perspective of said element I reintroduced into my adventures and this will be delved into at another point in time in the future which you will see and know when it happens but to shed light about a month after the initial release or drop release date for destiny 2 I was given a proposal by the satanic kings the sister clan of terrain adaptive combat terrestrials here in the destiny universe in order to make a return back to the destiny playing scene as the, one of the coordinators or administrators of the clan since the clan had evolved to a point where the founder and the leaders don't have to be a part of it anymore in order for it to continue it's now its own working thing it's like a snake working without the head this proposal I had to think about heavily as to why I would want to return to a game that I left for many reasons known and unknown and then returning back into a universe where nobody would honestly know who I am or care if that to really try to understand what my goal would be a second time in Destiny or why I would need to be here and while I stated my case firmly I could see that the issue was still pressed and wanting me to be there because they wanted to have somebody experienced or somebody who knew about Destiny's inner workings alongside them that way it makes the gameplay much easier to play and enjoy in a coordinated and safely educational fashion now the other side of that that I also hear is that I can't play the game by myself it's really hard it's stressful and it gets boring because I'm the only one playing it and I want to play it with a friend because I know how you play you know how I play you used to be very good at playing this game we played it for years back in the first gen and I want to play it in the new gen with you I have it right here download it off of me it's a free to game it's a free game honestly for you what do you say deal or no deal that's <clears throat> generally the flip side of the coin that I had heard and so all the same while it is no specific or direct financial loss on my end at this time that I can see and it would be merely a free download to acquire and to temporarily make use of to invest time in and 
overtime, possibly money. I decided to go on ahead and follow through on this. Since I can take an interest into what the newer gen of Destiny has to offer, see what the new grid would look like if anything was new, interact with new people if anybody was worth the time, and to reacquaint myself with the newer gen. Honestly, it did not matter about my past exploits in the community, as this is a whole new venture, and nobody would honestly know or care who I was or what I did once upon a time or have done once upon a time in the community. And so, I can work with this. And with these underlining outlines and elements, I went on ahead and made my return back into playing Destiny 2. And upon arriving amidst fluttered activities and constant uncoordinated outings and get-togethers for nightfalls and raids. I'm against the whole thing about the raid thing still because I only enjoy doing raid teams and raids with people that all know their work and all know the work. Which is why when I do these things, I do do my part and I do contribute, but I also like to have a general comfort level with those that I would naturally like to play with online myself. And as you can understand, that list of people that I can comfortably play with in this gameplay is excessively low. And in addition to that low standard, there's also not a lot of people that can wholeheartedly listen during a raid or can not try people's patience to where you can just get kicked off or you get frustrated so many different times where you rage quit your own raid team and it just leaves it for a whole nother day pending the reset day or the day of and then we got to do this all over again with the incomplete and the incomplete and the incomplete until it finally becomes complete I don't want a whole repetition of King's Fall Raid all over again, trying to complete this Leviathan, whatever it is that you call it, and whatever many variations that are likely to come, because the creators are lazy as hell about incorporating new teamwork-based mechanics. This team-based activity I will also comply to, but because of many factors in real life, on many people's sides, whether or not they wish to accept it as such, responsibility has a way of teaming down on one's playtime rather successively. These leads to a lot of incomplete sessions, which does vastly draw me away from wanting to play the raids when the raids is the most constructively detailed portion of the whole video game at this point that draws any potential interest to me outside of confusion. And now we don't do these raids anymore because not everybody wants to get together to do these things because it's not interesting anymore. We don't do strikes or nightfalls as often anymore because not everybody's online or has all the correct equipment, quote unquote, in order to do all this stuff. I'm just like, well, boo fucking who? Boo who who? You don't have all the right equipment in order to complete it. You call It's called growing a pair and challenge yourself. There's nothing hard about challenging a game that's honestly too easy to complete doing it and playing it by its own rules. And I can't blame you for not wanting to challenge yourself because the gameplay doesn't challenge you, period. And it doesn't push the issue in wanting the players to get better. It wants to push the players into dumping more money into the game in order to have shitty end results coming back to you. And little by little, I've sat and watched select people, friends, frenemies, blah blah blah, even clan mates, also slowly leave the gameplay and all go our separate ways from this clan and the boredom here 
knowing that it is all originally what they sought with all their intention and now they all have their little hearts broken in realizing something that was idiotically seen way in advance that you're just now realizing now this is where we are at and now I see many new players and newer faces that I wished wholeheartedly did not pick up this piece of crap because it's not worth the time but hey you can't tell them anything it's their money and if they want to piss it away go on ahead but they will find out for themselves eventually that you get nothing out of this gameplay and so they're going to have to lose a lot before they can gain the correct thing and the correct element in order to truly progress in this gameplay and that is nowhere at all and with many mounting negatives that you have now heard from me and my experiences in the very short amount of time in the two months I've spent reintroducing myself into the cancerous verse of destiny I ask myself where is it next that I go from here granted there's many different directions this can go or I could just delete it destroy everything I own a second time and walk away from everything a second time without really having accomplished anything virtually significant but at the same time the people who brought me back went through a lot of trouble in order to bring me back and if I'm going to go through all that trouble and play the game again then I'm gonna wholeheartedly play the piece of shit for what it is worth and even though it's not worth anything I will still put a decent amount of interest into it to get what it is I want from this video game that I will not be denied and that is the video games platinum trophy when I have that I have everything I seek everything in the video game I don't give a damn about that's the only thing about the video game I care about is the platinum trophy and the saddest part about it is that they made the accumulation of the platinum status for the video game the easiest accolade that a gamer can seek to have it's so ridiculously easy that it's sad trying to get the platinum of the first game was harder and more rewarding in the end game than how they have everything set up here in the trophy listings for destiny 2 in addition to this, this is also the least amount of trophies I've ever even seen for Destiny, period. Even with the last expansion pack that came out for the Curse of Osiris, that's still an unimpressively low amount of trophies to acquire for this video game. Those that aren't even interested in grinding for trophies could have probably found a very small amount of solace and contentment in just grinding for the trophies in order to try to challenge themselves in order to complete said challenges to have said trophies accumulate into their trophy score collection but you didn't even do that so another opportunity missed because the company pissed away time in other things not necessary in the gameplay <sighs> watered down everything in the gameplay to such a vanilla destiny feel might as well keep the bullshit going and see how much you really lose amidst this grind for the platinum which is now my number one priority I don't even care about the clan anymore I just care about getting my platinum trophy that way I can be done with the gameplay and I can move on to a more rewarding and satisfying video game to play with my time because YouTubing in Destiny is going to be the death of my YouTube and I don't need bullshit dragging my career online down further than it may potentially be doing by just trying to coexist on my channel further without any specific gain this is why whatever destiny videos I do try to make or incorporate I try to have it be of a meaningful feel since nothing willingly can come out of the video game then that's one of those situations where you make something good happen in the video game or you make something good happen out of the video game and you make a memory and with a lot of past players that I played with I've made those memories 
both in good taste and the one or two that's in bad taste because of some people that can't handle being teabagged after they teabagged us and want to cause some dumb shit that they don't want to own up to, but that's a beautiful, needless tale of another time. Also, amidst my grinding, I'm also going to slowly just pay heed to the continual, gradual collapse of this Destiny 2 community and see exactly when it is that I see nobody playing this game. Knowing my luck, as long as it may be or as long as it may take me to accomplish my said goal or objective, I may see that come to fruition a lot sooner than later, depending upon how this next DLC goes that is pendingly coming out much sooner than later because the company itself is very highly aware that the gameplay is shit. So rather than setting the DLC date back a month later, you're going to push it ahead a month sooner for DLC Expansion 2. That way you give more content and more disappointment for all of the beautiful idiots playing this gameplay to enjoy. I guess for right now that also does incorporate myself. Because said person that I have my gameplay attached to and linked to that I'm share playing it with in order to play, when he gets the DLC, I get the DLC. So I'll automatically have a front row seat straight into the Hellborn fire that we will re-enter into for the second DLC expansion. But like I said, while I'm here, I want to just sit here and observe the community. I don't really want to interact with too many other people outside those I already know or that who know me that also by chance play Destiny 2 because I don't want to try and get into needless arguments with children or petty adults that honestly believe this game was worth the time and investment. I want to hear a bad joke. I'll turn on Comedy Central or some dope shit. Or hell, I could just turn on the news and listen to politics and really sit down and chuckle. But, my time in Destiny will eventually draw to a close. Probably much sooner than later, which means that my time being here was likely for naught, as I've encountered very few memories that I can make, but I do try to make while I'm going along. That way, it is worth, or was worth, the time in taking a look into whether or not I actually invested anything significant into the gameplay, other than time and or money. For any other questions, comments, or concerns, by all means, please leave them below. And weigh in on it if you feel what it is I'm doing is right, or can potentially be right, or does not make sense, or is not logical. I'm open to whatever forms of advice or the comment section that will light up or will not light up at all, or whether or not this video will even see any interest at all because it is a Destiny 2 relevant video, and it is a video relevant to a dying video game, so. Negative, 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 beautiful negative. Until next time, my friends, y'all have a good one, and as always, till all are one. For fuck's sake.